Welcome back to our next video of RimWorld. This time I'm doing something a bit differently. I would like to share some testing and analysis I did around the shooting specialist role of the Ideology DLC, particularly for my current 1000% snipers playthrough. We are having here four volunteers. They are shooting, of each of them is 10, but it doesn't really matter for what we are testing. What matters is these two are trigger happy and these two not. And one of each couple has the shooting specialist. So trigger happy reduces aiming time by 50% and the shooting specialist as well reduces aiming time by 50%. And we are interested in this because if you look at the sniper rifles, independent of quality, sniper rifles are among the worst ranged warm-up times with 3.5 seconds. From the moment you give the command to shoot, it takes 3.5 seconds to take a shot with a sniper rifle. After taking the shot, it takes 2.3 seconds to cool down, which is the time it takes after a shot before you can move, run away, reposition or take another shot. In case you take another shot, you again start with the warm-up time of 3.5 seconds. That means for sniper rifles, it takes a total of 5.8 seconds between each shot. And that's why the sniper rifles, even so high damage per shot, comes out with a very low damage per second. Kinda seems reasonable, I guess. People shouldn't be running around with 10, 15 kilogram heavy sniper rifles quick scoping across map. Of course, it's not the best weapon in the game, but we are doing the sniper rifle only challenge and therefore I'm trying to find out how to tackle it the best. So if you look again at the pawns, here we have the standard pawn with the normal warm-up time. So these two should take the same amount of time to take a shot. And here, of course, we have the combination. In case of cut, the warm-up time is zero seconds. So let's now have a look what's happening when these guys are taking a shot. Cut instantly took a shot. Because his warm-up is zero, and then he's in the cycle of 2.3 seconds. Every 2.3 seconds, he places a shot. Echidna here has the full warm-up time. It takes her 3.5 seconds to take one shot. In this time, Kat took already two shots. So Kat has more than double damage output than Echidna has. So let's actually do that now again. And maybe I managed to put in a counter somewhere to see how many shots they are taking and how fast. And now let's see what's happening if they're all in range of a marksman command. And I'm using another pawn's marksman command because if you would use cheetahs, those three would be in the benefit of marksman command, but not cheetah himself. Let's panther activate it. Now these four are in the benefit of the marksman command, which reduces aiming time by 40%. So let's see what that does to their shooting frequency. It doesn't affect the trigger happy shooting specialist because he's already maxed out, but the others clearly increase in shooting frequency. We clearly can see the benefits of the marksman command, especially or particularly for sniper rifles. So with reducing these by 40 or 50 or even 100%, you really increase damage output of sniper rifles. Now let's look into the numbers behind this test. I also did the same calculations for the heavy SMG and the charge rifle, which are very common weapons and heavily used. And even so, I'm not a big fan of the minigun due to its penalty in movement speed. It's having by far the highest damage output of all the weapons in the game. The minigun can't be missing in this comparison. The only difference to the sniper rifle is these weapons are burst weapons and therefore we have to take into account the time it takes for each weapon to finish a burst. 
It's about half a second for the heavy SMG and the charge rifle to finish the burst and about two seconds for the minigun. And these were the pawns which we were watching, a standard one, a standard pawn with shooting specialist and then the same a trigger happy and a trigger happy shooting specialist. And then we throw the marksman command on them and did the whole test again. The standard shooting specialist has the same effects like the trigger happy and the standard shooting specialist with marksman command of course has the same numbers as the trigger happy marksman command. So we can close that section. And of course, as we have seen in the test, the marksman command doesn't do anything anymore on the trigger happy shooting specialist because he's already maxed out. But anyway, you won't be having too much shooting specialist running around in your colony. Well, unless you are playing some crazy place or challenge, but usually you don't have too many shooting specialists. So you will be focusing more on these scenarios. Also, I looked in different qualities. I took the normal one but also Masterwork and Legendary, because Masterwork and Legendary also increase in damage output and accuracy. So here you see the warm-up time for each of the scenarios and the resulting reduced warm-up time for the different scenarios with zero for the Trigger Happy Shooting Specialist. With this, you can then calculate the maximum damage output, but also I took into account the weapon's accuracy, but not taking into account the pawn's shooting skills and any other shooting enhancements like bionic eyes. And therefore you have a reduced actual damage output than theoretically the weapon could deliver. Nevertheless, you see how the damage output increases in particular for the sniper rifle a lot. So a standard pawn under maxman command with the reduced 40% aiming time increases already to five. The trigger happy, which has reduced aiming time of 50%, 5.4 and then a trigger happy pawn within the maxman command cycle increases up to 8.3 that's more than doubling from the standard pawn and standard damage output but who is running sniper rifles only seriously so let's look also into the other weapons and for the heavy smg and charge rifle with already quite low warm-up times the effect is not as big as for the sniper rifle you can see the warm-up times, of course, are reduced, but in relation, not as much as for the sniper rifle. So the numbers for the damage output still increases, but not as much. But the minigun, again, it also has a big effect because the minigun has also quite a high warm-up with 2.5 seconds. But then again, you calculate the max damage output and with its low accuracy, it actually reduces the damage output a lot, but still very high numbers by far the highest in the whole game. However, in the particular case of a minigun, you may actually want to look into the max DPS numbers because with the minigun, you actually aim for the splash damage that weapon can do. In ideal case, you want to direct the minigun right into the center of a big pile or big blob of enemies. And then all these bullets will hit something, not concentrated on a single pawn, but into a big bunch of enemies this is the damage a minigun is going to do. It is freaking insane. Interesting, in the case of the trigger happy shooting specialist, I have marked these values. If you look at this, for the normal quality weapons, if you compare the sniper rifle to the charge rifle, it's a very similar damage output, considering the higher armor pen and much higher range of the sniper rifle, I think a normal sniper rifle is superior to the normal charge rifle. Maybe even superior to the heavy SMG and minigun, if it's played right. I would not have expected that. Also worth mentioning, I think, is legendary weapons increase armor penetration, damage per shot, and accuracy each by 50%. Which means the combined increase of damage and accuracy actually adds up from a normal to a legendary weapon it about doubles the actual damage output and finally worth mentioning is the high damage per shot for a masterwork and legendary sniper rifle if the bullet goes through the armor and the damage is not halved which considering the high armor penetration is likely to happen and the bullet of a sniper rifle is going to destroy any body part except for the torso in one shot. Only the human torso would take two shots to destroy it. The masterwork or legendary sniper rifle 
is going to destroy. I'll open again all the fields in case you wanna have a look at, but I said these are the same numbers like this and these here are identical too. So sniper rifles still aren't the best weapons in the game, but to be honest I'm really curious getting into mid to end game and see what we can do. I think it's going to be interesting, especially if you learn how to use the sniper rifles in the proper way. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. That much said, I hope that was informative or helpful for the one or the other. See you next time. See you and Marimon.